Hey, bitch. Life is a series of raw and messy broken parts, and it's up to us to embrace it for all the wild fuckery it is. So if you're feeling a little broken, well, you're in the right place. Welcome to Broken Bitches Guide. When I want to shine, I got Broken Bitches Guide. And I got it so divine, I got Broken Bitches Guide. Manifested by design, I got Broken Bitches Guide. Broken Bitches Guide. <laughs> Welcome to the first official episode of Broken Bitches Guide, formerly Haha, ha, Wait What with Mandy Brooke. I'm your host, Mandy Brooke, and today we're going to dive deep into the art of not giving a fuck. And that's like the one thing that I get asked on social media the most is like, Mandy, how do you not give a fuck? Because if you watch me at all, like I'm posting, you know, funny fart jokes and saying things that most people are very scared to say out loud. And for me, I'm just like, I'm here to lift the vibes, man. I'm here to make you laugh. And I am willing to be vulnerable about it and <laughs> and not take myself too seriously. So in this episode, I'm going to give you some practical strategies on how to stop caring about things that don't fucking matter. So if you're ready to embrace your inner Zen bitch, then come along with me. I'll lead the way. But first, before we dive in, I want to share something really special. I wrote my very first ebook. <laughs> it's 100% completely free to download, too. It's called Broken Bitches Guide to a Higher Vibe, a 10 page guide where I share the five simple ways that I lifted my vibration, healed my soul, and started manifesting my fucking dream life. And the reason why I made it was because I talked to a lot of you guys, you know, on a daily basis. And most of us are going through a really hard and transitional time. Maybe you're going through a divorce like I did, or you're just looking for direction. And in my ebook, I share a bit of my story of how I went from broken bitch to high vibe babe in five simple ways. <laughs> I love that little tag. And I give you all of the tools, literally every single tool that I personally used to break me out of the chains of literal despair. <laughs> If I don't laugh about it, I'll cry, guys. So just give me a minute. <laughs> so click the link in my show notes to download. Again, it's completely for free. And I really just want to put things out into the universe that are good and that lift people up. So this is my very first step, and I hope you enjoy it. I put my whole heart, soul, and tater hole into it. Goodness, just download it. You'll love it. Okay, let's get into it. We live in a world where it's very easy to get caught up in the opinions of others, the pressures of society, and the constant need for validation, because we have these useful but pesky little devices in our hands that show us a world that's not really real, <laughs> you know? I'm talking about our phones, by the way. We've all seen those deep spaces of TikTok and Instagram where people are arguing over imaginary points and topics that absolutely have no bearing in normal everyday life. Or those young to old comparison videos. Oh my God, these are my kryptonite. They make you want to go out and get Botox like immediately. I've been there, done that. Just avoid it. But I would bet real money that most of our problems would be completely eliminated if we didn't have so much access to useless information. Which leads me to my very first tip on how not to give a fuck. Identify what truly matters to you. Take a moment and reflect on your values, your goals, your priorities, and ask yourself, what brings me joy? What fulfills me? What aligns with my authentic self? And take away what you think should matter. You know, that's my healed people pleaser coming out. Oh, I should care about my kids perfectly made lunches or like, oh, I should care about politics and making the world a better place. Like throw all of that shit to the side and start from the beginning. What did you care about when you were a kid? Did you love animals? Did you care about your mom? Did you love dressing up and dancing to Ashanti? Did you like playing outside in nature? What were the things that you naturally loved doing? Because more times than not, what we enjoy as kids helps guide us toward our purpose as adults. For me, I loved talking to myself in the mirror. <laughs> Literally, I would talk to myself in the mirror for hours. I would act out scenes from TV shows in my bedroom and I'd sing. And all of those things have helped me with the career that I have now. 
<laughs> oh, you know, talking to yourself is, is actually very beneficial. And in our late teens and 20s, we tend to overcomplicate what we love and try to make it mean something. You know, we get sidetracked into marriages and relationships and debt and settling for a more stable career choice. And we eventually forget who we were. So let's get back to ourselves. And once you have a clear understanding of what actually is important to you, it becomes much easier to let go of things that don't align with your values and to stop giving a fuck about it. Another key aspect to not giving a fuck is learning to set boundaries. I know this is said a lot, but I'm going to reiterate it. It's really important to recognize that you have the right to say no to things that don't serve you or make you happy. Whether it's saying no to a social obligation that drains your energy or setting boundaries with toxic people in your life, learning to prioritize your own well-being is essential for living a passionate life. Boundaries also encourage so much confidence, too. I really think of boundaries quite like a foundation of a house. You know, when the foundation is sturdy, I have confidence walking in and not fearing that the roof is going to collapse on me. It's so much easier to not give a fuck when you're secure in what you will allow in your life and what you won't. And when you have standards for dating and relationships, work, you name it, you're able to identify what is worth your time and what isn't. For example, my dating boundary, and this is not for everybody, but if he doesn't pay for the first date, I automatically take him out of the running for a romantic relationship. You may feel differently, but that's not the point. The point is, I set a standard of how I want to be treated, and that person either delivers or they don't. And I could give two flying shits if they're interested in me romantically because they didn't meet the bare minimum requirement, the standard, the boundary that I had for dating them in the first place. So they're friend zoned. And having boundaries and standards just makes you so much more decisive in all areas of your life. Let's take friendships, for example. One of my standards for friendships is being a good listener. We don't have to talk every day, but when we're one on one, I am a really, really good listener. And I love when people tell me things about their life. And most times they share deep, dark secrets that I would never tell a soul. But if you do unload on me, and you don't give me that same courtesy in return to listen and share space, then I probably won't agree to hang out with you much after that. You know, I'm just giving you examples here, but identify where your boundaries lie and stick within that structure. Rely on those pillars like a contract, even write them down. Let your boundaries determine your next move and you'll start to build confidence and stop giving a fuck. <laughs> So I think we've all been in these situations where we're at an event or a family party and we're asked a favor and we immediately say yes and then we immediately regret it. Or on the day of, you're like, oh my God, why did I agree to do this? Like, I don't feel like doing this. I'm miserable. Well, my next tip to not giving a fuck is letting your default mode be no. That's right. Say no first, in your mind at least. Because when you say no and that's your default mode, you're basically telling yourself that you need to be convinced that this is worth your time and value. And we've all met those people that are really confident and secure in themselves. And notice that they say, no, I'm not doing that. They never say, I can't do it. The underlying message is saying, I won't do it. And they don't explain their decision either. That's another key point. Don't ever over explain why you made a certain decision because that shows so much weakness in your decisiveness. And for people that are narcissistic, they will prey on that. When your default mode is no, then they know that you value your energy budget and you want to spend time on things that are actually important to you. Saying no is so crucial to living your best life. And when you're living your best life, you could give a flying fuck what people think. Ha ha ha. Now, let's talk about fear. <laughs> fear, scary. Fear is often what holds us back from living our most authentic existence. Whether that's fear of failure or rejection or judgment, it can be incredibly paralyzing. But here's the thing. Fear is just an illusion. It's just a product of our minds. And it only has as much power as we give it. Especially the fear of what people think. Because, babe... No one is thinking about you as much as you're thinking about them thinking about you. 
Isn't that so freeing to understand like, bitch, no one is thinking about you as much as you're thinking about them. And if they were for some reason obsessing over how like cringe or lame you are, then they're probably not mentally all right. <laughs> like, you know, I have a motto that if I wouldn't take someone's advice, then I could care less of what their opinion is of me. And that has completely freed me from a lot of turmoil. See, I care about what my mom thinks or my best friends who know me and who want the best for me. But it has no bearing on my life whatsoever if some acquaintance that I met at some party has an opinion of my love life. Like, bitch, I didn't ask you. OK, if you're not fucking me or paying my bills, then get the fuck out of here. <laughs> That's really harsh, but it's true. And on the other end of fear is the fear of rejection and failure. And honestly, I think everyone fears rejection and failure in one way or another. Rejection especially, because back in the day, our only means of survival was to be in a tribe for shelter, to eat, to be protected. So, of course, the fear of rejection is huge because that literally meant death to our ancestors. It's literally in our DNA. But luckily, times have changed. So how do we overcome this deep-seated fear in all of us? Well, we just accept it and realize that it doesn't define our worth as a person and question those negative beliefs that formed because of it. Like if you're thinking, wow, I'm completely unlovable, everyone rejects me, then ask yourself, is that really true? Or is it that I'm chasing after the wrong kinds of relationships? See, self-awareness is a really huge, huge part of not giving a fuck, simply because you identify what actually matters to you. And then that fear of rejection and failure actually becomes acceptance that it simply wasn't meant for you. Remember, you are the only one who gets to decide your worth, and you are inherently worthy just as you are. Well, that's it for today's episode. I hope you found these tips helpful on your journey to mastering the art of not giving a fuck. And remember, life is far too short to be wasting worrying about the things that don't matter. So go out there, embrace your inner badass, and live life on your own fucking terms. Until next time. Be a fucking delight, bitch. And don't forget to download my free ebook, The Broken Bitch's Guide to a Higher Vibe, linked in my show notes. Cheers, hoe.